everybody. So today I want to talk about Canada and why they are a very interesting country to keep an eye on uh, because of their nuclear ambitions. Now, currently, uh, Canada is working on two projects, as far as I can tell. Uh, the first project being uh, the Darlington uh, New nuclear reactors that they are going to build there. So those are um, BWRX300s by GE Tachi or boiling water reactors, small boiling water reactors. And they are also uh, doing a refurbishment project over at Pickering. Uh, and finally, you have Bruce Power. Uh, Bruce, uh, Bruce is a big, very big nuclear power site, and they want to build 4.8 gigawatts of new nuclear capacity at that site. And right now, the, re the reason why this comes up is because I was perusing the World Nuclear News website, and I came across this news that there is a first public common period uh, for the Bruce C. Environmental Impact Assessment. Basically, what this means is right now they're going through all the hoops that you need to go through in order to make sure that you can eventually get a permit to build a new nuclear power reactor at a specific site. So first, let's take a look at the Bruce nuclear power plant as it is today. So what you see here is this is Bruce Station B. There are four CANDU reactors over here. Then here you have Bruce Station A, which are which is also a set of four uh, CANDU reactors. And then you have here uh, Douglas Point. I believe that there used to be another uh, nuclear power plant over here as well. I don't know if that was Slowpoke or something else, but you can see there's, there's, there's quite some work going on over here. So Bruce is actually the third large nuclear power plant that feeds uh, power to Toronto. Toronto is the biggest city in Canada. Uh, you also have Pickering, which is over here. Let me zoom into Pickering. This is a very large can-do uh, can power plant. This one is being refurbished or is going to be refurbished uh, after a long um long advocacy uh, being done by Chris Kiefer from the Decouple podcast. So this is a, a triumph for pro-nuclear advocacy. And then next, what you get over here is Darlington. And I believe that Darlington used to be one of the largest nuclear power plants in the world for a long time. And what you see here to the west of Darlington, that's the place where they are going to build four X300 boiling water reactors from uh, GE Tachi. So zooming out, what you can see is that Toronto and the, the basically the whole metropolitan area is is uh, the, I mean it's one vast city basically, and I believe that there's at least like I, I believe there's at least 16 million people living in this neighborhood over here alone. So when we zoom out to the larger picture, what what you see is that I have. Uh, basically put markers wherever there is a hydro station, wherever there is a nuclear power station, uh, gas, coal, uh, and even some uh, wind and solar. So you can see that <clears throat> over here, there are almost no nuclear power plants in the west. There's a couple of nuclear power plants in the east, but most of the power that is produced in Canada comes from hydropower. So let's get back. Uh, first, uh, this is a, a, a graph that comes that is, uh, originates from 2021. So back in 2021, uh, they had a different plan in Canada. They were still uh, trying to build a lot of wind and a lot of solar. Uh, but it looks like at this moment, what they're doing is they're, they're rolling back that ambition and they're doing the switch uh, from, from, you know, trying to do... Uh, wind and solar built out and, and, and trying to incorporate more nuclear power. So what you see here, this is the this is what they expect that they are going to do uh, up until 2050. And you can see that their uh, electricity electricity demand is going up from roughly let's say that 
Currently, it's, it's, it's about 600 terawatt hours per year, and they're growing up to well uh, beyond 800 terawatt hours per year. And, and just for those who don't know, if you have one gigawatt of uh, nuclear capacity, that nuclear power plant would be able to generate roughly uh, 8 gigawatt hours uh, and terawatt hours per year. Now, this is a very interesting website. It's called Wikipedia, if you haven't seen that. You've been living on to, uh, underneath a rock, but I've scrolled down to the to, to the interesting bit. This this is also interesting for those who, who want to know more about you know uh, how um, uh, what it, what it looks like when you are uh, building a nuclear power plant when it gets uh, put online. You know you can also see that there are interruptions in operations. Uh, these over here, like uh, Bruce, these 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 these. Uh, interruptions are for refurbishments or other things and, and this basically tells you okay so the construction period is in yellow and then in blue you get the operational period when the nuclear power plant actually starts producing electricity but what you can see here this is a list of all the active nuclear reactors in canada i hope that this is uh that you can see this uh so let, let me just enlarge this a little bit. Now over here, what you can see in the last column, my, my beautiful face is in front of it, is that, that that's basically uh, when, these, uh, when these nuclear power plants were constructed and when they were uh, connected to the grid and when commercial operations started. So what you see is that all the active nuclear power plants in uh, Canada these days are pressurized heavy water reactors and a pressurized heavy water reactor is uh, really significantly different from a regular pressurized water reactor especially when these are can do's so when you take a pressurized water reactor what you have is a large uh, pressure vessel in which your reactor components are installed and, and this large pressure vessel has really thick walls and um, it, it has a couple of pipes that, that flow into the reactor and it has a couple of pipes that come out of the reactor, those that come out that transport the heat towards the heat exchangers and those that come back, those basically uh, carry cooled off water back into the reactor core. Now a CANDU reactor is really significantly different than that because you don't have a big pressure vessel. What you have is that all these fuel elements are basically loaded, loaded into pipes. And these pipes, that's the, that's the place where the heavy pressure, where the high pressure is. And outside of these pipes, what you have is a basically a large vat that contains uh, heavy water. And that heavy water is uh, what you need in order to make sure that the neutrons get slowed down so you can actually uh, fission the uranium atoms that are present inside the reactor. Now, the, the, the neat trick about this, having this heavy water in there, means that the neutron economy and the, the speed with the, which the neutrons travel is such that you can actually use natural uranium inside these reactors. So you don't need to enrich you don't need to enrich new uranium uh, up to like uh, four or five percent uh, uranium to thirty five content because normally you have zero point seven percent uranium to thirty five and when you enrich it you enrich it up to somewhere between four and five percent but you don't need that with these pressurized heavy water reactors so that's 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 really interesting and what I what I what I would also like to do uh, is perhaps uh, talk to somebody who is an expert and, and, and get him to come online and explain to you what exactly, how exactly a pressurized heavy water reactor works because I'm not doing it justice, I feel. <laughs> so let's, let's go to, uh, let's go back to this, uh, to this uh, World Nuclear News article over here. Now, the interesting thing is that they're considering a couple of uh, technologies to deploy at the Bruce nuclear power plant. So they're they're looking at the at they're looking at the Monarch uh, reactor, which, which is a, a a modernized commercialized version of the Candu reactor. Next you, next you get the EPR, 
everybody should be uh, sh should be familiar with the EPR we all know about size of C, uh, Hinkley Point C, Okluwoto and Flamanville. Uh, next, they uh, are also considering the advanced boiling water reactor by GE Dutchie, which is a proven design which has been built several times in the world, and among which are the fastest construction projects, nuclear construction projects in the world. And finally, they are uh, considering the X300 and the AP1000, and the X300 is a uh, little bit of a... a, 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 a an odd choice because all of the other reactors are gigawatt scale reactors and the, and the the X300 is a 300 megawatt reactor so one third of a gigawatt that can be used. I just want to briefly look at all these technologies. Uh, unfortunately the the Monarch uh, reactor uh, website is, is pretty uh, you know there's there's not a lot of information here. Uh, they say meet the can do Monarch so that's when you get a PDF. Uh, it's, 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 there's not a lot of information here, but it, they basically say that the Monarch is a, a modernized version of the existing CANDU reactors. Uh, over here, back here, in, the, in this small diagram, you can see, uh, you know, the, this, is, this is what a CANDU reactor should look like. Uh, this is from a, a, a schematic perspective, obviously. Uh, not the entire plan is exactly going to look like this. Uh, it's probably going to look slightly different, but the concept is there. Uh, but but it's it it's interesting. So the reason why this monarch thing is, in, is interesting is because it offers a lot of um, benefits that other reactors don't have. For instance, these cancer fighting isotopes that you can make in these uh, in these can do reactors. That's something you can't do in regular. Uh, pressurized water reactors. I believe at least you can't do that. If, if somebody knows better, please uh, let me know uh, down in the comments. Because usually when you create medical isotopes, you use something like a specialized reactor for that, like a, like a high flux reactor, which we have in the Netherlands where they create molybdenum, uh, for instance. So usually these medical isotopes are made in uh, specialized reactors, research reactors or, or medical isotope production reactors, something like that. These uh, can do reactors, they can actually do that. Now, how they exactly do that, I don't know. This is something I'm really keen on learning. Uh, but, but this is a unique selling point of these can do reactors. And for simply for Canada, this would be uh, the best choice. I mean, they say it's 100% Canadian owned. Uh, and this basically here they outline what the benefits are. So, I mean, just just look at it. If they build a four unit site, this will call, this will have an impact of forty point nine billion in GDP in Canada. Uh, just looking at you know all the jobs and and all the economic activity going on, manufacturing, engineering, construction, uh, all of this uh, work that needs to be done is 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 a huge economic benefit uh, for. Canada. And, and they also say, okay, listen, during operations, what you get is you have all these, these jobs, these people who have to work at these sites. Obviously, the plant uh, creates electricity, which also is, uh, which also improves its, its GDP impact. And finally, when you look at you know tax revenue. Uh, these these plants they they pay local taxes. Uh, everybody has to pay taxes over the electricity that is being paid uh, that is being produced and sold by these nuclear power plants. So in all, uh, building something like a Monarch, which is a Canadian product, uh, would be uh, what I would advise Canada to do. But that but that's simply also because what I want to see is that they are going to export these reactors to other countries because I think that it is a, a a very nice design and I think that it is important important that we have multiple designs to choose from because each country has its own set of rules its own set of wishes and if you for instance want to build a new nuclear power plant let's say it's in the Netherlands. Uh, you want to have options. There has to be some com competition there. Uh, and that's why I think that this monarch is interesting. I mean, I would be 
perfectly fine if they said, okay, we want to do this can do six. I believe that there's also can do nine. Um, you know, uh, as long as it's commercially available, not just for Canada, but also for export. And I believe that, you know, it is because obviously there's loads of countries in the world. Well, not that many actually, but there are, there are some countries in the world that use pressurized heavy water reactors uh, that are either can do or based on can do, which is a benefit for Canada. Next, what you get is the, you know, this is the EPR. What you see here is a picture of the EPR in Flamanville. It, it, it's funny because it's it, it almost looks looks the same like the other two uh, nuclear power plants that are that have been built at uh, Flamanville. But it's this it, it's the one in the foreground that you see, which is the EPR. Um, the irony is that they 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 don't say whether it is the EPR or the EPR two. Uh, which they are uh, considering over here. I believe it's the EPR because that's basically what France is now selling to everyone. Um, do I think that's smart? I mean, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm, I'm being honest. I mean, they are currently working on a Mark II of the EPR uh, where I expect that they, they, they have made a lot of improvements. They have put all this stuff that they've learned from building the EPR and, and all these problems that they ran into they basically learned from that and then they said, okay, you know what, we're going to make an EPR2. So it would stand to reason that they were offering the EPR2 right now as a cheaper alternative to the EPR. Uh, but still, that but still that has to be, you know, we don't know whether they can actually do the EPR2 cheaper than they can do the EPR1. But the EPR1, uh, let's let's be honest, uh, the... the the projects that we've seen in size will see is basically the worst that there is. Uh, they have been nothing but disastrous for the nuclear industry. Right now, we are finally, uh, you know, finally there is uh, there there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Flamanville has been loaded up with nuclear fuel, so I expect it to start producing electricity and selling it onto the to the French grid within within a year, perhaps a year and a half. Uh, it shouldn't take that long actually. Uh, Okiluoto has been producing electricity for some while now uh, and I mean um, si not size well. Hinkley Point C is actually really a thorn in my eye at this moment. Uh, any, anyone who is pro-nuclear uh, should feel it in their bones that this is not the way that nuclear needs to uh, basically uh, try to sell a product because this is an unsellable product uh, at this uh, this rate. Um, then we get the advanced boiling water reactor. Now I went over to, uh, to <laughs> I went over to Wikipedia just to show you, um, you know, not not. Not necessarily what it looks like because it's it's a relatively relatively straightforward reactor. It's a boiling water reactor. Uh, it has a reasonable re reasonable size, so it, you know in terms of capacity, uh, these the, these are are gigawatt plus uh, reactors. Uh, but I want what I wanted to talk, what I wanted to show you is basically what you see here, and this is. I'm not going to try to pronounce this, but this is a, a nuclear power plant in Japan. And that's one of the, they have, uh, they have two reactors there. They started production, they started construction in 1992 and in 1993, and they finished, they finished construction in 1996. So these reactors really were, uh, basically built at lightning speed when we're talking about new nuclear deployments. Would I recommend Canada to build an advanced boiling water reactor? I would say no. Not if you're serious about exporting can-do uh, can uh, can, can technology. But if you want to do something fast, well, then trying to repeat the build process at the uh, Kashiwazaki Kari Kariwa nuclear power plant, uh, that would seem like the way to go. So I, it's logical that they are looking at the advanced boiling water reactor. But if we look at, you know, when the last one was, uh, was finished, uh, 
then basically what we're left with is uh, Lung Men, which is in China. And, and, and that one was that was that one that one still took twenty years to build. So I mean, it, it, it's a bit of a mixed bag, really. This advanced boiling water re reactor. Yes, they can build them fast, um, and yes, it's it's a proven design. So I, I'm I'm still wondering why not more countries are considering building these advanced boiling water reactors at this point. What I do know is that there used to be a, a plan to build an advanced boiling water reactor in the UK, uh, but unfortunately that project was cancelled. So so we don't know, but the advanced boiling water reactor, it's a pretty interesting uh, reactor, and I think that it, it would not be bad if we started trying to build more of these in, in other countries. Next we get the AB1000. We have this beautiful picture of Vogel. Both reactors are online today. Uh, also, this this project uh, did not lather itself with success. Uh, it turned out to be much more expensive than they initially thought, but luckily they finally managed to uh, finish it, and it and it started producing electricity. And right now, there are a lot of countries and a lot of projects uh, lining up. Basically, AP1000 projects lining up. We have one in, in, in Poland. Uh, the Netherlands is currently uh, looking at building new AP1000s. Uh, and over here, what you see is that Ukraine uh, has a, a memorandum of understanding with Westinghouse for building new uh, AP1000s. India is trying to, uh, uh, or, or India is planning to build new AP1000s. And then there's uh, Bulgaria, where they also are planning to build new AP1000s. Now, the, I think that the AP1000 may become one of the most built new pressurized water reactors in the world. Uh, but it does take some 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 proactive salesmanship from the U.S. from Westinghouse to get this done. I, I do think it's a it's a pretty elegant design. There's there's some 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 problems with the EP1000 in, in terms of how to uh, how it should be con constructed. If you want to know more about this, you should talk. You should you should look for uh, videos where Mark Nelson uh, talks about these. Uh, nuclear power plants but the eb1000 is a is an interesting alternative and then finally we have the x300 the bwr x300 just 300 megawatts or i believe that it's now 327 it's a relatively small reactor uh, design it it, it it builds on uh the knowledge that uh g tachi uh Basically, the, the, the experience of, uh, of GE Itachi with building boiling water reactors in the world. Currently, this is the only place in the world where actually one of these is being built today. Uh, the final investment decision has not yet been made, but they are still doing, as you can see, a lot of the civil works in order to make sure that the, the, the first uh, X300 can actually be deployed in uh, Canada. Now, finally, and this is something uh, that 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 some people might find strange. I mean, there's there's a a, a final tab here. I, I could also uh, do something for this uh, ultra safe nuclear. Uh, so there's 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 two Canadian uh, vendors, two Canadian uh, developers of of reactor technology that are uh, basically I, I don't know. Whether they are whether they are um, already available in a commercial sense, or whether um, people are ready for the product that they are selling, but Terrestrial Energy with their molten salt reactor, uh, that's something I have basically come into nuclear, um, looking at this molten salt reactor by Terrestrial Energy and thinking this will be the future. And I still believe that the high temperature and the, the, the liquid fuel uh, are, are key aspects of this nuclear reactor that make it uh, something tantalizing. To me, uh, when I'm talking about the future of nuclear, uh, the fact that you have a thin pressure, a, a thin pressure vessel that you can actually uh, manufacture, you can do this using robots with 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 uh, you know cutting robots and robots that actually 
uh, bend the material and, and and then actually weld it together. So uh, personally, I think that the the molten salt reactors is still. I, I really hope that they that they that they get to sell a lot of units. Uh, but but at this moment, it's it's a little bit uh, interest for molten salt reactors is low. Uh, you do have this uh, this uh, Abilene. Uh, molten salt reactor experiment that they are going to do down in Texas uh, so that's very interesting but if you want to do things like synthetic fuels, uh, sustainable fuels uh, then having a high heat platform like this uh, would be beneficial and then finally ultra safe nuclear corporation that's that's a, a weird one because they're, they're looking at uh, space reactors for propulsion. Uh, they, they're also trying to do something like um, like a, a modular reactor, but very small. So this is this is basically a, 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 a not a pebble bat reactor, but it's a it's a reactor with triso fuel that is encapsulated in blocks, and and and, and basically they use a gas to cool this reactor down, and this reactor can then uh, provide steam for electricity or for whatever heating that you want to do. Now, triso fuel, that's something I'm not that excited about personally, but that's because I always think about reusability of fuel. I think that a once true cycle for fuel is, it's not optimal. Let me put it that way. I think that um, optimal fuel utilization should be one of the things that we strive for. Um, and and these triso, I I I simply can't can't say whether triso uh, allows for this or not. So, but this is in, this is an interesting interesting development. But I don't I I am unsure whether they are ever going to sell uh, a a rea an actual reactor, actually build a reactor somewhere. So currently, what you see uh, coming back to this news that they are looking for light water reactors and the pressurized heavy water reactor. Um, stands to reason it, it, it's a logical thing to do and personally uh, if it's for Bruce uh, I would say Canada be smart and make sure that you go uh, for your own technology to ensure that your own labor force gets more experience um, that you that you start on that you start to get proficient with not just building these things but also making the components for everything uh, and eventually exporting these reactors and, and just look at uh, just look at uh, uh, South Korea for instance the way that uh, Kepco uh, exported their reactor model to Baraka uh, in the United Arab Emirates that should be that should be the model that we all should try to strive for if you have a reactor technology to sell then it then it then it is worth it to actually become very proficient at it and, and to you know to to what you do is you build confidence uh other customers from other countries uh they will actually become more interested in these canadian technologies if you show that you can do canadian technologies well and if you look at for instance the recent uh, refurbishments at Darlington uh, that's where Canada showed that they are actually pretty proficient in doing nuclear and building a new nuclear power plant is basically the high water mark if you can do that uh, in time and at you know in time and under budget or you know at, at near budget um, that's basically what we need at this moment in the world we need to become more confident and have more confidence in uh, nuclear energy. And with that, you have reached the end of this video. Um, I want to thank my Patreon supporters. I'm not going to list them off this time, but if you want to support me making more of these kinds of videos where I try to inform you about uh, what is going on in the world of energy and what is going on in the world of nuclear, then please go to Patreon and become a member of my Patreon page. In any case, thank you all for watching and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye.